So I certainly heard a few times that story about um, Jimmy Deanahan, the TD, former minister, um, wanting to supposedly sign up one of the two men who were before the courts in relation to the crystal meth seizure down in Kerry and wanting to sign him up as a, a candidate for the general election. Yeah. No, of course, it, it like everything in, in this world, it goes rapidly around social media mm. um, and kind of stated as fact. Obviously, um, Nathan MacDonald was a very well-known person in, in Kerry. Um, he was on the uh, the local Chamber of Commerce or the Tralee Chamber Alliance, it's called. And in that role, he he posed a number of, of high-profile TDs, including Simon Coveney and um, uh, Michael McGrath. But it was also being stated as fact that he was due to stand for election or had been, at least been asked to stand for local elections mm-hmm. for Fianna Gael. Um, but we spoke directly to, to Jimmy Dean and the local TD down there, former minister. It was it was said that he had approached yes. him. He categorically said he had never approached him. And he also said that he'd gone and checked with the local Fianna Gael office in case somebody had approached him on his behalf without his knowledge or somebody in there had all, had made an approach and he said it was never the case. So it's just... He said he had visited the Ballyseedy Garden Centre, yeah. which Nathan MacDonald owns. And um, that has been said in court during his court appearances. Yeah. The, the, the garden centre have also put out a statement, you know, just saying it's a hard working place, and it obviously is where where people work uh, without any any uh, thing hanging over their heads, you know. Now we have to be careful on this story because there are people before the courts, and so we're just really going to stick to that. But there was a, an appearance um, a today, which is Wednesday, um, of these two men, which is Nathan Macdonald. He's 43 and, as I said, the owner of Bally CD Garden Centre with an address in Bally Row. And he's charged with possession of drugs worth more than 13000 for sale or supply at the Garden Centre between October the 27th and February the 12th. And a second man, James Lean, who's aged 41 and he's from Listole, he's facing two charges, one in relation to the importation of crystal meth. And again, it's worth that 13,000 figure, which is a... It's a technical thing. A technical... Um, ter- so, I mean, I suppose... Part of the charge. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously, the, in under Irish law, um, there's there was a mandatory figure put in. It was put in as 10,000 punts at the time, um, there was a law brought in that that would any amount of drugs seized over that amount would be subject to a mandatory sentence, which was meant to be ten years. So, um, if you're co- like at the time, if you're a couple more than ten thousand pounds of drugs, you'd be subjected to this mandatory sentence. Now, the way the courts operate in Ireland, um, judges have discretion. So, you will see that people who are caught with over that amount, convicted and found guilty, they still don't automatically get that ten year sentence because judges have discretion to take mm-hmm. other things into to account such as an early guilty plea. But that's why that is because I got a couple of calls from people yeah. saying it's only 13,000, what's all the big fuss? But it's yeah. not, it's just, that's it's a technical... just a technical term within the charge. So his charges are, the two charges are the importation of crystal meth worth that amount and the possession for sale or supply of uh, the drug worth that amount. Yes. So, I mean, they, what what you've had is obviously there was a main court appearance on Friday. Methamphetamine is the se- is that a separate drug then? Is that no? That's it's methamphetamine is the is the, crystal meth. That's the yeah the, the, the chemical the name chemical for crystal name for, for crystal. So meth. he's charged in relation to the importation of it and the basically the the possession of it for sale or supply. Yeah. Um. So they appeared on Friday, so that kicks off a court proceedings, mm. I suppose, and as part of that, um, you'll have. As you know yourself, you'll have a lot of mention dates where matters are before the courts and both sides get to have an input um, and that they'll go on. So we had another appearance today and um, there was... By a video link, this one. By video link. So they're both in two separate prisons. Um, Mr. McDonnell is in Port Leash Prison and um, James Lean is in Cork Prison. So they both appeared by video link and... Um, as part of that, the court heard that the DPP may yet bring further charges and um, that um, their DPP directions are still outstanding. So that's, that's you know, obviously the, the, 
the evidence is collected and some of it is brought when at the charge point, but further evidence will be brought before the courts over the period of time before you will get to any trial. And um, some of that was discussed that, the, the, you know, they're still waiting for directions from the director, director of public prosecutions, basically. And the last time we spoke about this, the substance was sort of being technically examined to make yeah. sure that it was the chemical yeah. makeup of, of crystal meth, essentially. They, these men were in custody at the time and while they were still in custody, that testing came back yeah. with the confirmation that it was crystal meth. Now, all of this relates to a 32 million euro seizure of yeah. crystal meth, of 543 kilos of it, yeah. which was found and we heard in court that um, customs examined a container at Cork yeah. Harbour, which contained this substance. Yeah, so, I mean, you also heard, so there was there was some details were given at the point of charging um, last week and they included, um, you know, how, how the state had, had seized this amount. It's been subject to testing. Um, you also heard the state gave some evidence about uh, phone, phone data um, that will form part of their charges. Um, there was also some information given about um, mach- uh, you know, a, a machine that were seized. So we'll hear more about that over time. Um, but also some of some of what was introduced at that court date was what the state are going to allege, not necessarily that those those drugs were due for an Irish market, but they gave evidence how they believed it was ultimately destined for Australia and that what was described by, by the guards as an innocent person was due to collect this certainly implying that that person didn't have knowledge of what they were about to receive. So all of that will form part of the case. Um, was evidence given in relation to where it, was that individual but that, talking about in Ireland or in Australia? No, based in Australia, Australia. but there was phone data. Okay. Now the state will have to prove that that phone data connects, you know, individuals to other individuals. Mm-hmm. And that'll, but, you know, the, the state are able at that initial point to give a, a kind of a, a, a broad overview of what they, what they believe uh, then that's subject to to, to cross examination mm. and to to the process of discovery, which you'll see then will go on over the next few months. Yeah, over the next few months, so the, there's another appearance in March, which I imagine there's going to be little change from this. There might be a bail application, yeah, possibly. But um, the book of evidence is being put together, and that can be quite a meaty thing. And of course, that book of evidence is then given to any accused and at that point they can make their pleas yeah. because neither Mr. Lean nor Mr. McDonnell have at this point indicated whether they are going to plead guilty no. or not guilty yet but that will come. Yeah and and like we did hear some evidence um, you know from, from one of the guards who said that they, the state believes that Mr. McDonnell received and shipped the machine in and that he was due to be paid 150000 for storing the machine. And this was very strongly Denied by um, by Mr. McDonald's solicitor, who said he had um, he had not admitted to the su- to sale or supply of drugs, and solely admitted to storing the machine. The machine isn't a drug, his solicitor said, mm-hmm. and that um, he denied vehemently any knowledge of the presence of drugs. Okay. So that some of that evidence was given. Um, he also he has also said his client did not receive any money. So that was also said during the initial mm. hearing. And no doubt that will form part of a defence if he pleads not guilty when the, the case gets underway. So that's really where we're going to have to leave it for the moment. Yeah. But we will um, obviously come back to this story as it makes its way through the courts. And just so people do understand, we can't go into anything regarding the backgrounds or anything like that about the two accused. They have their right to basically innocence unless proven guilty. And because it's before the courts, we have to be very careful. Yeah, exactly. And you see, um, there's obviously been, there's huge interest in these cases at times. Um, but you see then the, the process of justice uh, begin it's again, I suppose, from the point at which they appear in court. And all of the assertions have to be put before a court of law and then the defence get to challenge each one of them and the, the state has to prove them. And it's, you know, it's a lengthy process. But the first and only one that so far we can, the the first and only sort of allegation that's come yeah. up that we can deny is that Jimmy Deenan has categorically said yeah. that he didn't approach him to go forward. No, no, for no. It so would have been every, a good story though, wouldn't it? It would have been a good story. And once again, you can't believe everything you read in social media. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Niall. Thanks, Nicola. 
Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.